In this video, we're going to be looking at something that uh, knowing about pivots is going to help us with. I've got two systems of equations, uh, linear equations, and I'm going to convert both of those into matrices. The first one is going to go here. I've got 1x1, 1x2, and 5 is my constant. With no term here, I have a 0x1, and I have a 1x2. I've reverted to the x1, x2, the x sub i notation here, just because we haven't been using that, and we really should. We need to get a little bit more comfortable using that notation. It's more conventional in the algebra, uh, the linear algebra setting, so I want to go back to that. This second system of equations has a matrix uh, 1, 2, negative 1, 4, and 0, 1, negative 2, 8. And I've chosen these two systems. Uh, these two matrices because they're already in echelon form. That's a big part of what we want to um, look at here is what happens or what does being an echelon form do for us. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is highlight the pivots. So there's a pivot there, and there's a pivot there, and they are in fact the same numbers for both matrices. Both systems of equations have uh, leading entries of one for both of our um, both of the pivots. That's kind of irrelevant. Um, those numbers could be anything to, in order for me to make the argument that I'm about to make. Um, but as it happens in this case, they're, they're all one. So what I want to say about this, uh, these two systems, um, I'll start with the, with the first one, the, the system of two with two equations and two unknowns. The second system is a system of two equations and three unknowns. And that should in itself tell us something, but we'll come back to that in just a minute. It's, uh, so what I'm going to do now is kind of highlight that this is a pivot column. This is a pivot column, right, because it contains a pivot. Notice that the both matrices are in echelon form, and as it happens, the, the systems of equations that I started with were in, in effectively echelon form. Um, but that's because I want to, to focus on this particular feature. The first system has two variables, x1 and x2. And I'll, I can say that the first column represents the first variable. The second column represents the second variable. I can do that over here, too. These are all my x1s. These are all my x2s. These are all my x3s. All right, we want those all to line up. I'm going to erase this arrow here. Kind of confusing and a little bit distracting at this point. Um, so the first system has two variables, and it also has two pivot columns. And so what we say about these two variables, x1 and x2, is that, that, is that they are what we call basic variables. x1 and x2 are basic variables. I could say the same thing if I had the system um, kind of annotated, I guess is not really the right word here, but x plus y equals 5 and y equals 3. I could say the same thing about x and y are basic variables, right? Because I've used the x, x sub i notation, I'm saying that uh, x sub 1 and x sub 2 are basic variables. In the second system, x sub 1 and x sub 2 are both associated with pivot columns. So they are basic variables. But x sub 3 is what we call a free variable. It's not associated with a pivot column. What this means, or what it's going to come down to, essentially, is that in order to uh, write the solution to the first system of equation, we're going to be able to come up with two numbers. I'm going to call them A and B, because I don't know just off the top of my Actually, I do know just off the top of my head what they are. Let's back up just a little bit. This is a very, very simple system, very, very easy one. Remember that um, matrices come from systems of equations. And this second row here is actually uh, an abbreviation, if you will, of 
this equation right here, x2, which is effectively y, right, is 3. So I know that y is 3. And if y is 3 or x2 is 3, then x1 is going to have to be 2, right? So I can solve this one really almost sort of just by logicking it out. But with the second system, with the second matrix, I can't do that, okay? I, I'm not going to be able to find a single numerical value for x1, x2, and x3 that will satisfy all three equations. Ultimately, what I want is a number a, b, c, numbers, a, b, and c, uh, like I have 2 and 3 here, that satisfy both of those equations. But I'm not going to be able to find one. And that's because the, the system or the matrix contains a free variable. Uh, what I will be able to do is to identify a way of expressing that variable in terms of the other two, but I won't be able to come up with a numerical value for it. So ultimately, this has been really just a way to describe what a basic variable and a free variable are, uh, although we'll get, we'll get into that in a little bit more detail later on. Um, more importantly for right now, you can take a matrix in echelon form and identify the pivot columns. And if you can identify a pivot column, then you'll know which variables are basic variables. They're the ones that are associated with those pivot columns. Any variables associated with a column that is not a pivot column, that variable is what we call a free variable.